Today we've got a set of FE Ford cylinder heads in the machine shop for a valve job, but first we have several broken exhaust manifold studs to remove using a combination of various tools, the torch, and our MIG welder. Our goal here is to save the original threads if at all possible so that we don't have to go to the extra effort of installing any thread inserts. These FE heads are pretty notorious for breaking exhaust manifold studs, and a good part of the reasoning is that the upper bolt holes here are through holes on the flange, so on the back side, the bolt is open to the elements and the corrosion really gets in there over the years. We're starting by using the torch to get some heat into the area around the broken studs and using the air hammer to peen the flange which often helps break some of that corrosion loose. For the studs that broke off above the casting we have a great collet style stud removal tool and using the impact the collet simply pulls tight to the stud and then unscrews it on out with the help of the heat and some oil. And this tool is also great for removing studs that you don't want to break, but you want to keep the threads undamaged, like if you're going to reuse them. Obviously not in the case of these being that they're broken. And unfortunately, our tool is pretty old, so I can't find exactly where we bought it from, but you can find these types of tools online. I just don't feel comfortable giving you guys a direct recommendation on one that I haven't actually used and don't know the quality of. As you can see, that tool works pretty easily, but before we get to the next challenge, I wanted to make an announcement. As you know, we are a small family-owned machine shop, but we also sell automotive engine parts on our website, www.jamzonline.com. We stock a wide range of stock and performance parts, engine building tools and supplies, and more. If you want to support our small family-owned business and support the American dream, check out our website for your next project, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to follow along on our future content. Now let's get back to it. If you've watched my short style content before, you've probably seen me removing a broken bolt by welding a nut to it and unscrewing it on out. And yes, this can be done on cast iron heads as well as aluminum heads, but I would be lying to you if I said it wasn't a bit more of a challenge on the cast iron. In fact, the first few attempts here were about as bad as it could possibly get, as the welds I were getting just literally were not even sticking to the bolts. This is a process that you really have to have patience with, but as long as you have patience and persist, I guarantee it's going to be successful in 99 instances of broken bolt out of 100. But don't be like me here and get impatient, and instead of working it slowly with the wrench, I thought a breaker bar would work better, but instead it just gave me too much leverage and broke the nut off before the bolt would break free. Now finally wising up to the fact that I wasn't getting a good weld, I decided to take a burr to the top of the bolt to make sure that I had a nice clean surface to weld to, and I even went ahead and drilled a, a hole just smaller than the diameter of the bolt, about part way, maybe halfway into the depth of the bolt. The goal here is to get a more solid weld between the nut that we're using and the broken stud, as well as it puts a little bit more heat into that stud, and overall, it's kind of a technique that I use when the stud isn't coming out easily. Despite everything we've already done, I still wasn't having luck, so I drilled it again, welded another nut, and hit it with the torch again, and got back on it with the air hammer to see if we could finally get something done to get this stud out. And you might be wondering why I don't immediately spray oil on the stud after welding, and the answer is that if your first weld fails, the oil is just one more contamination to make the second weld more difficult. So we like to wait until we know the stud or bolt is moving before we hit it with the oil to help free it up. Now I know it doesn't look like much movement and that's where the patience piece comes into play. So at this point I had a good feeling it was free. I hit it with the oil and we just have to take our time working the bolt back and forth and it will gradually free up. If you just try to force it, it's going to break the nut off and you're going to be starting over again just like I showed here the first few times. But just like that, the bolt's finally free and the threads in the head are still usable. So let's try to take what we learned and apply it to the next couple of bolts. This always reminds me of going to the dentist and I kind of hate it. Anyway, starting with the same process of drilling a hole in the center of the bolt, often the drilling step is really where people go wrong because they fail to drill on center and straight, and it can result in a broken drill bit acting as a pin in the bolt, so just don't do that. Now take note of the sound of the weld here. For whatever reason my weld had a bit of a stutter, and I'm not a welder, but I decided I didn't have my wire speed high enough, which caused this. Alas, I gave it a go anyway, but both of the welds on both nuts were pretty much junk due to that stutter, and they twisted off immediately. So, had to go back to welding another nut on. Now this time, the weld sounded better, and I had a good feeling, so I went ahead and sprayed a little bit of oil on each of the broken studs, and gave it a few last love taps with the ham air hammer to help break them loose. 
And I'll be honest, at this point, I was pretty frustrated because this did not go as well as I thought it would. Remind me never to make a video about broken bolts again. And without much more work here, we had four of the five studs out, and we were moving on to the last when this happened. Oh. Dang it. Like half of it came out. The last stud twisted off at about the depth that I had drilled to, which at this point makes it pretty difficult to weld a nut to since the stud itself is a quarter inch down in the hole. So it's time to do what I'm sure every YouTube mechanic and machinist will say they would have done to begin with and set it up to drill. I grabbed a left-handed drill bit that was just under the nominal bolt hole diameter and with the head leveled up on our TCM 25 seat and guide machine, it was time to get that last bit out of there. And it's much easier to drill on center at this point because the upper part of the hole acts as a guide to center the drill as opposed to having to guess or try to center punch the bolt on center to be able to drill without damaging the threads. The nasty squeal here is the sound of that last bit of bolt finally breaking free and unscrewing itself up on out of the hole as the drill bit went through it. You can actually see what's left of it right there around the drill bit still. The last thing we like to do is run a tap through to clean any remaining corrosion on the threads so that the customer goes to reassemble. They won't have any issues with the bolts or studs not going in. And if you want to see what can go wrong with this step, I'm going to have a video live on my TikTok um, when this video goes live. Those of you who have been following us for a while probably know that we like to live dangerously, so you probably have an idea of what happened here. All in all, with a bit of persistence, we managed to get all five of the broken manifold studs removed from these heads and even managed to salvage the original threads, avoiding having to go to the extra labor of installing thread repair inserts, and even if it took multiple attempts, that's a win in my book. There's always going to be the guys who prefer drilling and easy outs, but in our opinion, you'd be better off investing in a cheap MIG welder and using this method, as many shops are going to charge you between $30 and $50 per broken bolt for removal, and probably more if you tried and failed yourself first. With this set of heads being in our shop for a full valve job, resurfacing and so on, we're obviously going to surface the exhaust surface here, get it nice and flat, get rid of some of this rough edges here that probably wouldn't seal as well if you just put it back together. But if you guys are doing this at home and say you've just removed your bolts and you want to get the, head, uh, the exhaust manifold back on or headers or whatever, um, we actually recommend Remflex gaskets. The Remflex exhaust gaskets, you can see they're pretty thick here and they're actually designed to be used in less than perfect applications just like this. So if you guys do wanna support our channel, be sure to shop jamzonline.com. I'll put a link in the description. And one of the products we list are these gaskets. Um, like I said, they're designed as a gasket to be used in a less than perfect application. That's not saying you can't use them where your manifold and your surface, you know, the surface of your heads is perfect. Um, they'll still do, still do great there as well. But they are designed to stop those leaks that you know some of you are going to be facing if you don't have your head surfaced after you know 40 years of the heads being on the car and you know you're trying to get rid of those exhaust leaks. Um, so if you want to support the channel, be sure to check out our website. We have a wide range of engine parts for almost any engine out there, ranging from stock to high performance. It's www.jamzonline.com. And every time that you shop there, you're helping support our channel so that we can make more videos like this one for you guys. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.